Right, okay, let's see what the sound is like. Any better? Yeah, so it sounds a lot better. Right. Okay. I'm a Falkland Islands registered uh, Scania. Got to get a few uh, bits and bobs added to it right now. Whilst I'm here. Ironically, it's a daft dealership of all blazes, but you know. These things happen. Go. Might be interesting. Let's see what the pharmacist uh, put a random, a random skin on it. Let's see how it. Um, Yeah, I think these need to be tempted before I skin them. What the fuck's up in there? Um, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, so looks like I need to properly do a proper skin if I wanted to use those. Pick some Metallica, right? Fucking three grand for that. Jesus, titty fucking. <laughs> yeah, three thousand pounds. For a piece of blue. Hello, cats. How you doing? Welcome to single player. Welcome to uh, Saturday night. I'm taking a extended hiatus from TMP. Well, it's basically I got kind of got a little bit fed up of it. So here's my uh, lovely Scania. She is a six twenty. You have to indicate left off the motorway if your exit is part of lane one. Uh, generally, I would. Because you'll probably have to indicate to move over onto lane one anyway. I've spotted a mistake. This container is not a uh, twist lock, so orientated wrong. Now the trailer is a uh, again, it's a mod, an expensive one as well for what you get. You don't get much customization on it; just literally the the box, yes or no. Um, you sent me a pic on Discord. Okay, I'll let me just have a look at that. I've not had a chance to check. Well, 
Uh, you can probably get away with not indicating there. So this is my ride. Uh, the trailer, like I say, it's a Denison. It's a, it is a mod. I will put a link up as to where to get it from later on. You don't get much customization with it. Uh, I've had to physically open up the DDS to change the license plate, change the color of the box. But you do get customizable options for the tires, and you get three cont uh, container options or an empty chassis. It actually comes and it thinks it's a refrigerator, so I've had to change that. Well, if you got no uh, bands, go for it. Go for it. They always need moderators, it's a thankless job. I did two and a half years working for uh, working for them. I'll probably go back to being a moderator at some point, but not yet. Right. So, I don't know what LTXU actually is. In fact, whilst I'm thinking about it, I will go to Container Bit Code Lookup. LTX. London Tank Management. In South End on Sea. That's where that uh, kicks up. So yeah, it is actually in use. So I might have to change that. <laughs> right, we are uh, Trondheim. So let's pick up another container. Pick up a load, and we will go to. Let's go to the UK. Come on, come on, come on. Wick in GB. Or Wangi Bay. Or Iceland. Or Felix, though. Could take some dried milk to London. I don't know who would want to go there. Have I got any tips for applying? Be honest. Give them the sort of, uh, answer all questions honestly. That's the best I can, t I can give. 18 tons of dried milk. So, we are going to go down towards, um, uh, send me all the way down there. No, fuck that. <laughs> Head down towards Oslo, uh, towards Bergen, I think. I mean, if you. Yeah, you do get an interview. Mine was with uh, Wheezy and Jeff Ray. A couple of audio, uh, a couple of the other staff, and it's quite an in-depth interview. Because they want a, uh, they want to know that. Where's the streamline? 
Why ain't gonna streamline? Not on this profile. On this profile, I have got this one, that one, and that one. We ain't got a, uh, no streamlined on this uh, profile. No. Now the DAF I drive, is, uh, sorry, not the DAF, the Scania I drive is actually a normal S series, normal, uh, normal R series with streamlined top lights. That's why I think it's a streamline. But this is a uh, Scanny S620. It's a bit of a bitzer. seven or eight. I uh, went in there earlier on, got me meatballs. Hello JT, how you doing, how you doing? Time for another uh, drive down to somewhere, from somewhere. Ah, I've just spotted a recruitment agency. Way! <laughs> and yep, there's a boss. He's asleep today on the engine on the engine hump. Well, on the floor of the truck. Are you allowed to share what stuff? They no. Nope. Uh, because that will be breaking uh, confidentiality. And they are pretty strict on uh, stuff like that. Because you are dealing with people's uh, game accounts. So as you can imagine, they want to keep that information uh, private. Which is perfectly understandable, really. But after all, you wouldn't want anyone giving your private details away now, would you? Way up. Chances are it probably uh, goes on between. Yes, I am. I am using a sound one. That's a tip. Uh, I think it's a creech boom sound. This scan is full of mods. One, I'm using uh, Eugene's Scania. I'm using LS wheels, which are like Brazilian style. Uh, obviously the trailer. It's 50 bloody quid. I mean, yeah, it's a nice trailer. Is it worth 50 quid? No, <laughs> to be honest with you. 
I feel it's a bit over it's seriously overpriced. Uh Trucks Ball Bar from uh, Gumroad, Abbas Lights, um, Shocker Horns. <laughs> hey, Pat, how are you doing? Uh, Verotic uh, LEDs on the uh, there, because I've got a lighting kit from there. Big T light uh, beacons. Again, LS wheels. Uh, side skirts off the Danish style side skirts off the Steam Workshop. And some rather uh, nice corner castings as well. So put them on. Because every Scania we've had since the uh, 4 series, sorry, since the 2 series, has had them. So it's a ni it is a nice truck to drive. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and inside it, I've got Cecil's uh, Mega Pack as well. Kelsa air bar at the back. Kelsa back bumper. I mean, there was one mod out there as well that gave you, uh, which I think I've got it actually, but I've not uh, activated it. And that gives you uh, like a, a load of different air horns, but they use a screamer. You got the Coffin Dance, Pirates of the Caribbean, Baby Shark, Sandstorm, and a few others. So we're now heading down to uh, Exeter. Although it wants us to go. Why have I not got a keybind? Map. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> a few people on Fox on the Box have been a bit critical of it. Uh, where are you now? Bumper cam. Map. World map M. Right, that's all that done. Oh, and mind you, do I really need to go to that? Not really. I mean, there's also as well with this if you got the RGL uh, rigid by cast. There's also the ability to have uh, wagon and drag with this one as well. So we are here. That's Trondheim. We are going to go down to Bergen. We're going to go that way. That will then drop us to Newcastle on, uh, Newcastle on Tyne. So that'll be today's uh, starter route. I've got, got me smart shifting as well, so I go to there. It's It sounds nice. I mean, okay, the drum brakes are not accurate. I don't think the Scania S has uh, drum brakes as an option. 
But if I want these wheels and I want to have the uh, actually not have the end of the axles floating, so you can actually see into the rims, you need something behind there. So it ended up having drum brakes. I found a mod as well. I found some mods as well that uh, changed the text for Georgie's radio. So, oh, nice! Send me an invite. <laughs> I'll join you. Ooh, that's getting swift. Got his license plate mod as well. Uh, of Vadik. I've got three copies of that. I've got the default copy. I've got two other copies as well. And one of them I'm building up. I'm just putting all the license plates are gonna, are gonna be Falklands plates. Now, by rights, Falklands are like our place. You need white at the front yellow at the back but yellow at the front is not unknown so as a result I'm having, uh, to make it a lot easier I'm having yellow plates at the front I was at, also as well, I was at Convoy at the Park uh, last weekend. Nice show. Not bad at all. There was a guy there pulling a scan. Okay, probably had a bit of gravity as he is, but... Hard work. as well put some uh, change me to music player turn that down a bit now for those of you who buy their own bloody gas and electric it's just skyrocketed Gone up eighty percent. If it goes up another eighty percent uh, at the next price cap, it'll be ridiculous. You know, the average family having to pay six grand on electric. And if it goes up another eighty percent, I mean, Jesus. You know, before uh, before we know it, we could easily have electricity and gas bills twenty five thousand pounds. Which is higher than ninety percent of the average ninety percent of people's wages.
So I just hope the government uh, does something to uh, address that. blaming the war in Ukraine. Nah, it's not necessarily got nothing to do with the war in Ukraine because we are not importing Russian gas. It's blatant profiteering. And the idiots that we've got in uh, number 10 are doing absolutely nothing. The way things are going on, uh, I think there's going to be a big hit coming towards Russia soon, as sanctions and their economy begins to shrink. So we are now heading down alongside some uh, Norwegian river. Yes. I mean, in reality, you could probably park your truck up, go down to that river with a cup, scoop it up and drink it, and you'd be fine. I wouldn't like to do that in the English river. It'll be full of shit. Yeah, this this water tastes like shit. Turd floats by. <laughs> It's a bit nutty. In the town of Domas, or Donbass, not quite sure how you pronounce it. But out of all the container trailer mods I've had, this is the only con uh, container trailer that actually keeps its container. Which is great. When I unload it, I'll, I'll have the container on my back, so I can go there to my next job, pick up that, and you know, your container does not miraculously, miraculously disappear you know, or change deliveries. You know. Which is how it should be.
life as a box rat is get to drop wait 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 put the truck in the bay wait a bit more wait a bit more four hours later five hours later you're clear you're done back to the dockyard get another container Now that's that's container trucking in a nutshell. You do you spend a lot of time waiting to be loaded, unloaded. Which I suppose it's all right if you like that kind of thing. I don't. I like to get on with I like to get on with things. Welcome to Otter. Yeah, at uh, Convey the Pot. Jimmy Broadbent was there. And I arrived there, sat D, and see the cars going around the track like. Uh, apparently, he made he was coming around in fifth position in one lap. I think it was probably more like in one move he gets to uh, first place. Nice move, Jimmy. In the uh, second race on Sunday, he uh, nearly put the car in the kitty litter. Spun out. Kept it going, kept it out of the kitty litter, which is good. But he only got fourth place. He's doing pretty well in the Praga Cup. I think we head towards our bridge, I think we head into a nice screenshot location, don't you think? Does have to press the right button.
we go. One for the album. And there are places well. We've had some new trucks come. We've had two brand new DAF uh, 18 tonners. CF, just like the uh, the one I drive. Slightly different internal specification as well. Uh, different tail lift assembly uh, with an internal isolator. And some boys already might have tear a chunk out of the gear. Fucking animals. I mean, on uh, Monday and Wednesday, I think it was this week, I was, uh, got a gas uh, collection. Uh, Monday, I think, yeah, it was Monday was gassed. Take two of the IV goes back to uh, the rental company because we are replacing them with two brand new owned uh, DAFs, like I said. And then go take my truck down to gassed. Two o'clock, well, two o'clock tip. I was there at fucking eleven o'clock. I rolled up. I got. Uh, Come for the collection, but I know you're not ready yet. Let me know when it's ready. Get me head down. One o'clock goes by. Midday goes by. One o'clock goes by. Two o'clock. Drive! <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> and it was again like it. <laughs> Same thing happened again on uh, the other day. We had uh, like two drops. It's like, get there nice and early. Get me head down. But yeah, for those of you who are just coming in, this is my truck. For uh, your truck, you made it too. It's actually a Eugene Scania, but it has got uh, all manner of attachments fitted to it. Oh, cats! Have you played Stray? Sooner or later, we are going to be heading into uh, heading to the crossways because we are just south, just north of Oslo, just south of Lillehammer, and we go up this way, and that brings us to Bergen, or we can go to Oslo and slide like across the Herschels. But then we'd be too tall for Denmark, we'll be 4.3 metres high, so we are going to have to go this way. So here we are, Rose's corner here. 
manual mode. Proper set of walls on the roof. And then once we get to Exeter, we'll be just rolling around the UK, I think. Do some UK jobs. Well, maybe take a run to uh, Iceland. I don't know yet. Could even take a run down to France. Because this particular trailer type, because obviously the key, uh, it's got a, a high cube box on it and it sits quite high, it's above the 4 meter height limit for most of Europe. So. Iceland, Faroe Islands, Ireland, Northern Ireland, France, Finland, Sweden, Norway. That's pretty much always going to be allowed. In. I am thinking of moving, switching platforms um, because I'm no longer on TMP now, so I've no really need to hang around on YouTube. So I might switch over to Twitch. However, there will still be YouTube content. Uh, any drives I do uh, that are interesting, because I've got a GoPro now. Anything like that, or like shows I go to, and I want to put like a video up. Yeah, I can use uh, YouTube for that. But I can switch to uh, Twitch. You can imagine the uh, my Twitch name ain't Zantec. It's Space Night Trucking. But basically, the stuff I'll be doing it'll be pretty much the same sort of thing as it's just driving on uh, driving on ETS two. I've done videos there, but it's been quite a while since I've been on Twitch. Well, here we are. This is nearer to Oslo than we are. Yeah, we're approaching Oslo. Oslo. Yeah, we're actually in Oslo. Well, I've been to the place, I've not yet discovered it. Yeah, it's not a bad platform.
You're still gonna have issues with like any, any streaming service where uh, copyrighted music, which is the music I'm playing at the moment, is fine because it's non-copyright. It's off the YouTube library, so it's perfectly acceptable to use even on Twitch. with Oslo. I discovered Oslo by driving through a tunnel. Now heading over towards Bergen. I think it is. A couple of junctions to go, yeah. Some of the tunnels echo and others don't. I got on Twitch when um, I started to I follow Squirrel. Well, sooner or later, the uh, price of bloody fuel keeps and heating keeps going up. I won't be following anybody. Anybody will. towards uh, Dramon and then uh, into another tunnel. I have to do is just set uh, me Twitch up, and there will be a um, bit of an announcement on YouTube, I think. No, don't think anybody is. Six grand for the average household to pay, believe. What's it? 
And if it goes up 80% again, you're going to be looking at, what, 10 grand in June. Then 18 grand three months thereafter. Then 20, uh, then probably close to 25, 30,000 pounds if it goes up another 80%. So this time next year, nobody can afford, can afford will be able to afford energy. Nobody. Yeah. You know, once it gets to say thirty percent, if it goes up another eighty percent after that. Even the MPs themselves with their multi million pound bloody what's it? Uh, it'll start to bite them. We are now looking at hyper I reckon we gotta be looking at hyperinflation. This country's never had hyperinflation. The Germans have in the 1940s. Right. Yeah, it'd be cheaper to go down to the cash machine, draw out of the $200 or £200 than it will be to go to Tesco and buy bog roll. People will be uh, simply just disconnecting themselves from the grid, like cancelling their da uh, their gas and cancelling their electricity. Because you won't be able to pay it. Yeah, what do you watch on TV? Just black screen. It's going to affect all of us. Some people more than others, some people sooner than others. But the way it's going on, it's going to affect us all. And if it keeps on going up the way it is, the economy will just nosedive. Because people won't buy food because you won't be able to cook it. Because it'll cost too much. So, whether your name is James O'Brien, Boris jo uh, of LBC, Boris Johnson, or Joe Public, you will be affected. Because there'll be a point where, I mean, if you work at McDonald's on minimum wage, because you, you, need some, you know, you're on the desk at, at McDonald's, we in a warehouse on minimum wage. How can you then afford a six hundred pound a month energy bill, at least a? £300 a month mortgage or rental bill. Yeah, that's a thousand pounds already. That's probably more than you're going to be earning. And we haven't even got to the silly uh, upgrade yet. And people are blaming Russia. No, it's not Russia. Not when we don't import Russian gas. One, we haven't got this. Uh, we've only got 
48 hours worth of gas storage in this country. So we can't store it. Which doesn't help. Yeah. We've got very little in the way of resilience. It's not looking good. So we'll have a a short intermission once we get to our next uh, town which is going to be Bergen I think yeah our next town's Bergen about half an hour away we'll have a short intermission there and then we'll catch the ferry to Newcastle YA Geordie Land then Probably come to a horse, get on the M6, get on the M5, straight down to Axeter. Do I believe that our government is going to be doing something? I fucking hope they do. Well, the other thing is, our government is full of bloody uh, rich people who seem to be only in it for themselves. Economy crashes. No, but it ends up in a situation where nobody has a job. Not a single person. Because places like McDonald's have pulled, uh, gone bust because nobody's buying burgers, and they can't afford the uh, the energy price to cut the food. The supply chain then collapses. Yeah, I can't see much uh, reason for celebration right now. I mean, the only thing is, I mean. This war in Ukraine, I mean, if it drags on, yeah, it's all, it'll get to a point where I think the uh, OPEC will probably start having to pump out more gas to bring the price down. Never know. Oh, Belarus. Our aircraft have been converted to carry nuclear weapons. Do not push us because we have already got targets uh, in which to attack. Good luck.
That's why I say good luck to him. Because he probably won't get very far if they try. There will, there will be a tipping point. And I think we're getting very close to it. I think the government they want they want to get their income tax rolling in, so they don't want the economy to collapse. And they're the only people that can do uh, do it and sort it out. I mean, what I would do in this uh, one thing, go, okay, BP. You're not going to be putting your gas. 50% of your gas is to go onto the domestic market, not the international market. And you can charge this for it. No more, no less. We can charge less, but you can't charge any more. You know, oh, BP, you've, uh, oh, sorry, Shell, you've also got wells in the UK. Again, uh, only put 50% of your gas onto the open international market. Either that or we basically, we private, we nationalise our oil and gas industry. By doing that means that the Ah oh, thanks Rosa. You know, by doing that we can then say right our gas and our oil are gonna stay on the domestic market with only thirty percent going into the international market. So for domestic supply we can basically undercut everybody. Because if it keeps on going up, steel industry won't be able to function. The glass industry won't be able to function. And so we've got basically six months to save the economy. It's not a long time. Because in nine months time, if it carries on, we won't have an economy. The UK will be a failed state. And nobody wants that.
nobody wants to a, a state with nuclear weapons to become a failed state. is a danger. You know, we should have made uh, moves. last year yeah. why can't they make the cap upstream so BP can only sell at this much why did they not do that yeah, it's this government being very slow to respond you can see the Russians building up on the uh, border with Ukraine last year. Oh, but oh no, we are not going to invade Ukraine. We are just having exercises. And then our troops will go home. You could see it happening, but we did nothing. And then, literally 24 hours after the uh, Winter Olympics, boom, Indigo. But it is not a war. It is not a military invasion. It is a special operation in Donbass. It was a special operation that would have been dealt with by now. And when a military walks into another country uninvited, that's an invasion. And they even had the balls to tell the U. Ukrainian ambassador to the UN that it wasn't an invasion. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew that sanctions were going to be applied to the gas, to Russian energy, which would push the price of gas up. It will push the price of uh, oil up. But we had no contingency plans in place. What a surprise. Oh, but it'll be over in, the, in a couple of months. A couple of months has been a fucking gone. It's not over. And it hasn't even really fucking started yet. You know, the Russians are playing a fucking dangerous game. They're weaponizing energy supply. You know, are they talking about putting solar farms across fields of in the UK well 
you can have farm or you can have solar. You can't have both. Because the reason why you cannot have solar panels you know, all over farms and farms all over farms is quite simply when you put solar panels onto land you can't drive a combine harvester through it. The uh, solar panels tend not to uh, like being bumped into by combine harvesters. So that takes that field out of operation for growing food, grain, yeast, you know, wheat. You know, rye, carrots. You know, your vegetable plants. You can't really pick, you know, cabbages out the ground with machines where it's covered in solar farm solar panels. It just doesn't work. So you can have one or the other. You know, if you want to have solar panels and massive amounts of it, put it alongside east and west motorways, M62, the M5. To some degree, uh, the A30, sorry, the A42 top and bottom of the M25. Yep. Along the A50 that runs between Stoke and Long Eaton because it's east-west road. Put it in the fields. Put it alongside the motorways. Yeah. South-facing walls of uh, high-rise high tower blocks. Put them on there, on the roof of high-rise tower blocks as well, facing south. If you have a south-facing wall, a south-facing south-facing roof, put so, yeah, solar panels on it. You know, that's what they should do. Well, nah. No, nope. our government isn't that intelligent. Yeah, you know, they'd rather let people uh, let their voters die, which is great. It's great for your uh, for your election chances next. Uh, year when half the people who might vote for you are dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's laughable. It's criminal. It's insane. I think I can fill up in Newcastle, I think.
Now, in non-ProMods map, there's actually a petrol station down here, but I don't think it exists in ProMods. Dookie now. Yeah, it's no longer there. That's the joys of having the uh... Whoops. I was gonna carry straight on there down that road. Now nope, there's a bloody uh, collision wall there. Welcome to whoever's just come in just as I crash. Of course, I hit a bloody collision wall. thing is I wasn't actually watching the GPS you know if I got the GPS if I was looking down at the GPS like oh the road's coming off here right lane so now we go and get some uh, Roll into Newcastle, get some fuel. Because I'm practically out the police stuff. Now I do know there's fuel in uh, Newcastle, I think it's on the motorway just uh, just outside town. So we are. Uh, the fuel is there. Forty litres of fuel left. That'll get me to where I'm gonna go. And then basically we'll fill up it there, we'll head down towards uh Hawes, then down the M6 and down the M5. down the M5 and that's water that's a long motorway that is and I think the, I'm not sure which is actually longer the M5 or the M6 
there's a fair there's a fair length I guess from Birmingham all the way down to uh, down to Exeter. Although having said that, from Catthorpe, just by down by Rugby, all the way up to Carlisle, so Actually, I think I might be pushing to make the M6 the longest motorway in the UK. Well, uh, probably the M25 is probably uh, one of the longer ones as well, because to go all the way around London. Yeah, it was a long road all the way up from London to Edinburgh, so. But that doesn't count because it's not all motorway. There's A1, A1M, A1. Back to A1M again. Back to A1. Some sections of it are motorway, some sections of it. A dual carriageway. I mean, this will be like the A1M. But other areas, it's just a dual carriageway. So it does make me wonder which is actually the longest motorway in the UK. In fact, in a minute, I, before I go and get myself a cup of coffee or from downstairs, I'm actually going to tab out. I'm going to have a look. Find out what it actually is the longest motorway in the United Kingdom. Six people watching now, and I started streaming 84 minutes ago. That clock's wrong. <laughs> that time clock's wrong. So, welcome to our channel, and if you do like what you see, pray to the gods of like, share, and subscribe. It's now time for my taco break. I'm going to go and get uh, fuel from the ESO in a minute, which is there. So I'll just have you sitting for a moment. Whilst I go and get myself something to drink. But whilst I'm thinking about it, um, it's the M6. 231 miles.
So, yeah, it's uh, the M6 is the longest motorway, but the longest road is the A1. Right, coffee time. That's it, got me a cup of coffee, I'm back. Uh, yep, this is the... Also as well, another mistake with this mod. That is an ADR plate. It should be refolded up all turned around when not carrying any ADR goods. So right now this truck is not legal because I've not got ADR on board. I've got dry milk.
take both pumps like. Back onto the A1 and then head down towards uh, Beedale and then we'll be crossing over to Halls and heading down the M6. You know, time to the end of the run by the way is 43 hours. It's only an 11 hour run, so. Although, even so, that would be uh, a day and a bit of driving. You know, what's well, one thing I'll have to try and do? I think I'll try and do uh, my next stream, which will be next Saturday, to literally try and do it to EU Taco Rex. <laughs> I can do it in single player. Can't do it in multiple. Because you can't roll the uh, server on. Fuck, I forgot my sugar. Never mind. Yeah, and that's part of what this game was actually meant to be all about. But ProMods has really has improved it. the radar cruise control picking up oncoming traffic. Well, ideally it just needs to pick up what's directly in front of it in the same way. It doesn't matter what's coming towards it. Because that's in the other lane. where we come off here and then we start heading to uh, head across the Pennines Leaming Barca rest area if ever you've actually been to uh, leaving bar. The actual services here mapped out on the pro mods are pretty accurate. Stunningly accurate.
best just turn the uh, map on a second so I can see which junction I need. I have a rough idea, yep. I mean, we could actually, if we want to, get down so far and, uh, and take the local take local roads. But, nah, keep on get on the M6. Fly down the M6. Flying down the M6 in this will be a lot easier than flying down the M6 in real life. You don't call it the M shape for nothing. <laughs> Nice place for a screenshot, I think. About that, I reckon, I would say. Take the blur off it. Swing the... Uh, what's it round? Well, I could take a rest there. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, SES. Get your act together. Right, uh, what I'm going to do, 
yeah, uh, I need my want my air intake there. Change the top cap and put the air intake on the sides, I think. So it's that one there and that one there. Right, there we go. Now let's just have a look at the custom beacon. Yeah, it does accept them. Right. Uh, So what we'll do put those on there. No, I'm putting the wrong bloody ones on here. <laughs> now, the last time I used this uh, beacon bar, the beacons were 1.3 with the old uh, lighting system so looks like they may have been updated I know the, the these ones have good thing. Let's got that done. That's the only thing I don't like. It clips through the uh, the light mass clips through the three uh, twenties. Oh, you're too big. Shame that. Now my truck's getting to look how I want it to look.
give this guy a wave. Make him drop his camera. <laughs> we come down to Apisat. Now, sooner or later, we are actually going to be on the side of... Yorkshire. Now, in reality, he would have actually mo uh, probably stopped and moved over a bit. Well, I think SCS of, uh, well, Pro Mods, they put the line of traffic slightly too uh, overcompensated a bit. And now here we are, this is the M6, Britain's longest motorway. And as it actually carries on north and becomes the A74, then the M74. But I was watching a channel called Auto Shenanigans, where they did a series where they went around all of the UK motorway network services, visited every one of them. There are less than 100 motorway services in this country. Only about 95, that's it. You know, from the likes of Pease Pottage and South Mims to Rugby uh, to Keel to Leeming Bar. Now, flat out. We won't go any faster than this. This thing is limited. This truck's limited to 50, so it'll be a bit of a slow drive now all the way down to uh, Exeter. We are M6, M5. That's basically, yeah, that's where we're going. And what we have over here is Haitian. Haitian docks. Now there's a bit of actually quite a distance between here and the uh, the power station over there. Pro mods have modelled it too close to the uh, the shore. It's actually quite a distance away. I mean, you can see him. Don't get me wrong. But they are very far. You have to go through a 
several small towns to get to the power station. But we're now approaching uh, the M62, uh, which will be our next junction that we'll be passing. Then it'll be Lim with the M53. And then it'll be various other junctions. Then we get down to junction 8. Which is completely unlike what it is in reality. It's actually a Y-shaped uh, interchange. Where if you're coming south of the M6, you exit left, go down, bend to the right, go under the M6. But if you are coming uh, from the M5 and you're going to the M6 south, again, you exit left, you go down, you go underneath the spur road of the uh, of the junction, underneath the M6, come up and then join the M6. But we've got 600 kilometers, seven hours to go. So it's not a uh, too bad of a run. You know, if this was in TMP, I probably would have met up with a nobody or a fuckload of idiots. You can pretty much guarantee if anyone's got the name Wreck Ban in their uh, in game tag, they're probably driving like an idiot most of the time. And yeah, I have seen it on numerous occasions. You know, you'll, you'll pull out of a junction from a side road without looking and hit somebody. And blame the other guy. Don't wonder why you yourself get demand. Well, that's some of those, that's another story. I think I'll take a nice fun. Bit of a Kalika wagon behind us. Right, and then. About there. Yeah. 
the thing is, with white, it bleaches out way too easy. Might have to make the colour like a dark red or something, I don't know. Metallic red. We'll see how it looks. But I do like the white. Uh, the white. Might just tone it down a bit, actually, make it slightly more, slightly less white and a little bit more grey. Well, I can do that once I get to uh, to Exeter. Thing. Driving outside the camera, outside view, is not as easy as what people make it out to be because you can't, uh, you can't really get to the lanes in time. It's much easier when you're actually in the cab. You got this view up here, but again, when you're up here, you can't really see much. This view down here. Now this is the view from the uh, the radar. And there are people who actually play TMB and they drive like this. Yeah. What's missing? Yes, mirrors. Uh, but again, that's a, that's a sum up for another time. We've got five hours to go, so probably about half an hour worth of game game time left. So this will take me up to about eleven o'clock. And maybe next week's stream will be a, a little bit happier. And I'll also get to hear from British Gas Fund what they're actually going to be charging me power next year for the next three months well, I'll tell you one thing though, although I can I can afford it at the moment uh, this winter our boiler will not be coming on. I mean, it's a mild winter. Uh, probably going to be a mild winter anyway, so probably won't be needed.
Oh crap! There's the M5. <laughs> Didn't realize I was this far down. We could go. Down to Catthorpe. But then it's just uh, basically just into Birmingham. Down to the island, spin it round, back up and back out. Hello Lucas, how you doing? You're a little bit late from the party because we're nearly towards the end of the run. As I take my lovely scanny, well, whilst I'm in Birmingham, it does give me the opportunity to just turn the paint, tone the paint down a bit. Paint scheme. At the moment, it's like right up there. So if I just take it down to about there. Well, let's just have a look at what me. Ivory white, distinct white, Arctic white, Alan grey, Eastern grey, medium grey. That's almost blue. That is. So, light to medium grey. Pure black metallic. Scandinavian blue. Ocean metallic. That is a nice colour, that is. I think I'll go with uh, go with that for a bit. It's still white, just like it's not quite so quite so vivid.
Right. Back to the M5 now. <laughs> Four hundred kilometres to go. And this should be done by eleven o'clock, I think. And it will pick us up. Oh, okay, hundred. Yeah, I can't actually imagine the job costing uh, being charged uh, that much to deliver a shitload of. Uh, Dry milk, 18 tons of dried milk. Would Tesco or Sainsbury's really need 18 tons of one product? I very much doubt it. Yeah, it's and since this game first came out back in 2014, it's come on a long way. I mean, some of the original models that we have in game really need an update, like the uh, original Scania's, the old Iveco or Ivido. Uh, Yeah, um, the majestic Actro across or work I say these Actros once he finally got the uh, what's it down? You know, the Valiant F four F sixteen H And they learn from those, SCS learned from those mistakes by not releasing all the brands in ATS. Well, you know, the only way is up. Just south, of, just south of Birmingham.
far, not far now. 316, winding down. But I've been down the M5. I've been down the M5 all the way to Bristol. Where the fuck is this tunnel? <laughs> However, I'm in a tunnel. <laughs> Wake up the locals. I've seen a lot of containers. <laughs> Does it want me to exit here or am I going, yeah, I'm going straight on. Nice new interchange as well. Not far away from Bristol. Well, is Bristol actually on the map? I'm surprised that SES have not put Bristol in because it's a major, uh, it's a major city. It's about that. They uh, scored a bit of an own goal there. I think not putting that town in. We, we are yeah, two hours forty two minutes. Uh, do something that we've got thirty two hours remaining. So we've got plenty of time. We've had plenty of time on this trip. Now the only thing I'll miss about TMP is the ferries. We 
because you, you take a ferry and you don't lose any time. It's just like teleporting there, using the go-to command. Because in single player, you take a ferry, it uses 19 hours of your time up. You don't get that on... Um, on single player. So on the multiplayer, you just, you just... Boom! You're there. Single player, boom! And you just use X amount of time up. Screenshot. I'll spend, I'll spend a lot of time when I'm driving around getting as, uh, spend as much time actually getting screenshots as I'm bloody driving. This is the last service area as well before we get to uh, to Exeter. And once we get to Exeter, that'll be it. However, tomorrow is a Sunday, but it's also a bank holiday. I have not got to go to work on Monday. So, you never know. Keep your eyes peeled. There. We are almost back in back where we belong. more markings on this container, I think.
107 kilometers away, about an hour. Just over an hour away. Although I think here we are, ba I think basically we've come off at this junction. That's the next one we want, not this one, it's the next one. Now is the lane splitting or is it... Yes, yeah, it's a split off. So we don't need to drift off here, we can just stay in this lane for a bit. Now, I remember a few years ago, I was just starting some seven and a half ton work. I was going down the motorway, and there were cones like this, but one of them was actually out in the main lane. And I hit it. <laughs> Ping! <laughs> Straight across. Went flying across the roadworks. Trigger the retard at stage one. Stage two. Long gauge. Pass onto the motorway, and now we can quite simply. Four miles to go, we're almost there now, it's on the top of the GPS app. The flag has appeared. 
Oh, what a sun... What an absolute gem of a sunset! Delivery <laughs> all the way from bloody Norway. Right, where's it want it? 90 points. It's basically in the corner. This room up here, everything we need. Walking around now. Okay. Tip in here. Window down. Honestly, that was just squash. Just a pile of hoses. Right, here we are. This is it. This is get this delivered, and this is the end of the stream.
that is it. Beacons off, lights off, into neutral, engine off. Get the thing signed for. Right, that is it. Time for me to shut the stream down because I've got things to do. It's been a long stream for you guys, so, you know, I don't expect you to sit there and watch me play whilst it. So, it's time to say good night. And if you like what you see, pray to the gods of like, share, and subscribe. And if you really liked it, uh, go to the monastery, grab the rope, ding ding, ring the bell. Good night. Uh, yeah, it was, it was lovely. Uh, JT! Oh, probably next month will be my changeover to Twitch. So, for keeping out for there, Space Night Trucking. So, for now, take care. Everybody, have a great weekend. Or will it be in a bank holiday Monday? Your chances are we're going to get absolutely fucking